While Michigan feminists worked on a full range of local issues, in 1976, they signed on to the national campaign to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Women are not included in the Constitution of the United States. That is an incredible oversight. We wanted to change that. We wanted the Equal Rights Amendment, which says, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. This is a, a fundamental value in America about treating men and women the same, about making sure that doors of opportunity and that our laws affect men and women the same. It's an issue that matters because it, uh, it has to do with how attorneys argue for your rights. And we as women have been shortchanged in that matter. First introduced in 1923, the ERA was finally passed by Congress and sent to the states for ratification in 1972, thanks to Michigan Congresswoman Martha Griffiths. In 72, Martha Griffiths called me and asked me if I would work with her for Michigan. I said, absolutely. Then we had a wonderful coalition of organizations in our state who had been working on many issues together, and so we were able to move right in and pass it. Helen Milliken helped organize ER America in Michigan. But there was vocal opposition using some of the same arguments that had been used in the fight against women's suffrage. The opponents of the Equal Rights Amendment said, oh, first of all, it will destroy the family. And I would be saying, well, we love our homes, we love our families, that is not going to be an outcome. And it's because of these bizarre, um, um, these bizarre stories that were told about what would happen if the, if the Equal Rights Amendment passed, that women and men would have to share bathrooms, that, uh, you know, I mean, it was just silliness. I remember one which said that the ERA would lead to an AIDS epidemic and um, this would allow the communists to take over the United States. And the thin line of logic in this brochure is that it was going to force the hiring of gay male waiters in restaurants with AIDS who were then going to infect the American population. Former Michigan Governor George Romney contributed to the misinformation when he said that the ERA was backed by lesbians, homosexuals, and other moral perverts. But it was this kind of lunacy uh, that we were, were encountering. And of course, it was lunacy with a purpose, which was to uh, whip up people's fears, to whip up hysteria against a really basic issue of social equity and to use it against politicians who were voting in our favor to unseat them for, I think, quite other reasons. Polls showed that 80% of the American public supported the ERA and only 20% were opposed. The 20% were very powerful and very, very well healed. The um, insurance companies really spent a lot of money on that because of what they would lose if women were equal. Patricia Hill Burnett was often asked to talk about the Equal Rights Amendment to groups of corporate leaders. And they said, do you realize that if this Equal Rights Amendment goes through, that we will have to pay you women exactly what we pay men? That would cost billions of dollars for all these businesses across the country, especially for the automobile company. And I said, yes, I know. <laughs> and they said, do you think for a minute we're going to support you? We also live in a world that's torn by a great moral struggle between democracy and its enemies, between the spirit of freedom and those who fear freedom. In the last the political years, tide started to turn in 1980 when Ronald Reagan won the nomination and the Republican Party removed the Equal Rights Amendment from its platform. The loss of broad bipartisan support for the ERA meant that state legislatures in unratified states no longer felt the pressure to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. The ERA died at midnight, June 30, 1982, the deadline for ratification. Well, I thought the ultimate failure was 
so crushing. It was hard, hard to believe that justice would not prevail. And it made you feel the whole impact of the whole women's movement, how the workers for suffrage must have felt when they had labored for how long, 80 years, 100 years, for the vote, just the simple vote. And I think that was very, uh, obviously very, very disappointing to all of us at the time. Uh, I think that uh, right now we find ourselves in a position of not only moving forward, but making sure we're not losing the gains that we do have. The defeat of the ERA and the ongoing struggle to preserve hard-earned gains convinced feminists that they needed to elect more women 